What I like about the nudes that, uh, that I paint is that they're all individuals and particular people. They're not inventions out of my head. Now I do a lot of work out of my head in the course of doing it because uh, one does work not with a model every single minute in front of you, but when you're dealing with a particular person, you're dealing with a, a person, a human being. They're not just uh, flesh. It isn't just a physical thing. A person has got uh, a spirit, a soul, a mind, emotions, and I know today uh, they don't uh, they go in for that. I do. And it's very different from the art of the Renaissance, for instance, which really continues right up until the death of uh, Renoir in 1926, uh, both in Europe and here and, and uh, in America. Uh, they were idealized figures. They were uh, largely invented with uh, the model taken from nature parts of the model taken or drawn, the color practically never. Um, it was, I worked with a color of life, with a color just, colors are, are, are just taken from life and they're all different and they're all unexpected and it's all extremely exciting. And since every person is different, you see, I'm not just painting Mars and Venus and all the rest of those people or any classical uh, illusions, do you see? And I'm not just dreaming it up out of my head and expressing, expressing what I think about it and what I say about it. I'm bored by what somebody thinks about things. I want to see the thing. So I want to bring alive the person in front of me in pain. That's what I do. That's what I spend a life doing. That's why the nude. Well, I decide on the pose as a joint venture between the model and me. And that's a very uh, uh, important thing in here because I don't just start with, I want you to take a lying pose or a seated pose or something. Sometimes I have an idea, but I work with the model so that we coordinate together as to what feels right. The model is not a model. The model is a human being. When I was in art school, the model was not a human being. The model was a model. The models were in every studio, and if you drew and you painted them, except in the Edwin Dickinson class where I was, you didn't take into account the context. You just posed a model up against a wall or lying down or whatever it is, and uh, it, the model wasn't doing anything except posing and being a model. When the jock straps came off the male models in around 1968, it transformed the whole picture. And models, both male and female, no longer were models. They were human beings. They were people. You'd be amazed. I mean, this was a sociological fact. They can call it a sexual revolution. I haven't seen anybody writing about this or talking about this, really, but it has made a profound change, a profound change for me because it meant that you looked at the person as a person. And that meant they had a mind, they had a character, they had emotions, they were whole and complete. I know in the new realism, you don't do any of that, but I don't go for the new realism. I mean, I, I go for dealing with a complete human being. And that is new. That is really new. That's not the new realism. That is a new approach because you don't approach the model uh, out of your head through an idealistic uh, pattern or any kind of a pattern. You're open to what you see in front of you, and I mean what you see, which is where the color spots that I was trained in with uh, Edwin Dickinson come in. That's where that comes in. It's a way of dealing with the truth of things, do you see? Interesting word, truth. Today uh, we have a lot of debate about whether it exists or not. It sure does exist. We're all balanced, we're all changed. Whatever pose we take, it's going through the entire body. And this, to me, absolutely fascinates me. I don't want to sit in my studio and diddle it out of my head. And I don't want to see what somebody else thinks about it either. I want to see what that model does because everybody is diff different. And so if you go at the body through the perceived how far, high for how wide of things, or proportions of things, from what your eye sees, and you go with a color 
uh, that is taken from your eyes. You're looking at something that's very strange because there aren't any lines in nature, don't you see? I mean, it really is very extraordinary. Uh, you can squint down and see large shapes, and you can question as to what those shapes are. And believe it or not, for a painter, it doesn't matter if you're down in the caves uh, 40,000 BC or in any culture, Japan, India, the Aztec civilization, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. When you're working as a painter, you're working on a flat surface with shapes of color, period. That's what you're doing. That's what we all do. Now, what hasn't been done is to do, do it so close to the observed nature, which is was my training. And you don't have to take uh, this observation and work uh, figuratively. You can work non-figuratively, and many of Dickinson's students did, professionally. You can make a decision as to what you want to do. I have made a decision to deal with what is in front of me as a human being in dealing.